a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red all over. I'm Victor Dandridge. Ryan Seymour. Feeling good up in the hood. How you doing, man? You good? Pretty decent. Yeah? Pretty decent. Not too bad. Not too bad. A couple of laughs early. Yep. Feeling right. Going into a holiday weekend. Yes. Yes. I'm going to eat up some stuff. Are you going to eat well? Yeah, probably. I'm a vegetarian, so. I was going to ask, like, what what is your main Thanksgiving dish? Mac and cheese, actually. My guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, are we, like, are we carrying our mac and cheese? Or are we talking, like, legit mac and cheese? Like, oh, legit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I'm a, I'm a mac and cheese connoisseur. It's delicious. Okay, we might have to come visit. Yeah. With, with my family, though, it will not be ranch dressing mac and cheese. As seen in earlier episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did say that earlier. No, <laughs> oh, it still made me feel all kinds of... Ah! Uh, uh, stop uh. it. Stop it. Um... So this week we had some suggestions. Yes, um, I we tackled a chunk of. Them. I was gonna say like I, I tried to do a few. Yeah, um, I know you definitely did a few. Yeah. Uh, what all do we have that's the same? Up top we've got Middle West, right, and Web of Venom, Carnage, Born. Okay. And then down here we go completely Nothing. rogue. Okay. All right. Um, so you want to start with what you did differently? Sure. What you got? All right. Uh, from Dark Horse, uh, The Whispering Dark. Ooh. So I, I, I skipped out on reading the first one. Okay. The initial blurb and previews that I ordered off was like a Lovecraftian kind of kind of Soul thing. Set in, right there. Yeah, I was like, done. Mission accomplished. So, mm-hmm. so read this one, right? It takes place uh, some kind of like military special ops behind enemy lines. So it's got that kind of like real, real like... I don't know, Black Hawk Down vibe to oh, it in terms of okay. in terms of it, um, but then there's these creeping things where people see stuff out of the corner of their eyes. Um, so you don't really know are they seeing things because they're keeping themselves awake using uh, like different methamphetamines and whatnot. Oh, this is straight Freddy Krueger talk. It, it, yeah. Okay. So this is all going on, right? But then they start to notice that things are definitely wrong. Very, very cool. So it takes like this Lovecraft vibe, mix it with Black Hawk Down. Um, if you're a fan of uh, Walk Through Hell, oh. check this out. Yeah, because there's okay. a particular sequence in there when things go horribly wrong, and it just you're just kind of like, oh, God. So, yeah, very, very, very cool. Military horror. Fantastic. Why mix. is that not a genre, like, it yeah, regularly right? gone to? Right? You could oh do so God. many movies with that. But Like, and, and low-key, there's movies that you could... Like already qualify in that Kinda, aliens, yeah. the mist, yeah, hmm. military horror, yeah, yeah. Write that one down because I mean, there's a lot of potential there. It's good stuff. I Got if, it. if we knew anybody in the industry, we could pitch an idea to. Jeez, man, hmm. God, if only there was like a streaming service that possibly yeah. would produce original content that would love to hear new ideas from very talented individuals such as you. Yeah. Kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah, we'll have to, have to see who's in the role of Dex. Hmm. So I also <laughs> read, <laughs> I did Shuri number two. Yeah. And um, what's what's crazy is, okay, we read number one. Mm-hmm. Loved it. I literally saw people online dogging it that I would think are the demographic for yeah. this book. They didn't like the artwork. They okay. thought it was childish. Okay. Um, which to me, I'm like, no, there's a clarity yeah. of the artwork. And the story itself is interesting mm-hmm. it's yeah. deep um in the first issue t'challa has gone into space the spaceship has disappeared yeah. and that's all you have of t'challa everything mm-hmm. else is the shuri show yeah. where they're looking for her to take over yeah. and kind of be this leader in terms of what's going to happen so this picks up and what we're getting further is this like folklorish tale of this Boabob area, what it means, how it connects to the to the the people, the land, everything. It's really kind of beautiful. Yeah. Um, there are guest stars in this. Shout out to Storm. Very, Gotta very love cool. her. Um, their relationship, like the relationship of the different characters in this, brilliant. Like absolutely great. I do adore where this is going. If you didn't like this book, send me your copies. <laughs> I'll take them because I'm sure I can find some young kids, especially some young black girls, that would love to get your copies. If you don't appreciate it, send them to me. I'll find somebody to take them. But I, that's yeah. real. Because that's a real interesting one. I, 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 I'm curious what people's negative, like full, you know, what they didn't like about them. Because right? I love the book. It was good. Everybody that we at the shop that picked it up has come back and said they love it. So 
whether part of the demographic or not, I think it's a great book. Yeah. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Either way, issue two, get that. Yeah. And if you don't like your issue ones, again, send them to me. I'll yeah. find some people. Yeah. It's just the way I feel. Um, okay, so now we're getting to the same Z's. Two radically different books. Ooh. You well, know what? You had a very personal reaction <laughs> to the Middle West. Yeah. Um, first of all, that title is going to kill me. Yeah. Like, I'm never going to say <laughs> that comfortably. Yeah. Scotty, I don't even know why Middle West. Yeah, it's because there, there's nothing in it that makes you, like, come up with that phrase, Middle West. Right. And, of, of course, us being in Ohio, it's Midwest. Yeah, it's Midwest. It's Midwest. Yeah. Yes, we understand that that's basically what it means, but nobody says it. Yeah, nobody does. Like, how Just, how Midwestern are you to be like, oh, I'm from the Middle West? I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> you're like, like no, where no, is no, that? No, you're not. That's some strange place with hobbits and elves. Yeah, like, I'm clearly not a police. Does yeah. anybody have any weed? <laughs> like, that's, that's what it comes across. Like, it's so <laughs> such a weird <laughs> phrase. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, I'm from Northern Middle West, and... Uh, <laughs> Can I borrow some sugar? Yeah. No, no, you can't. You are, you are obviously an alien. <laughs> Infiltrator. Like, this is not real. <laughs> You're wearing an Edgar suit. Oh. Stop <laughs> it with your bugness. <laughs> Mibs! Mibs! Oh, Human authority gosh. figures. Um, Possibly his greatest role. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I mean, the, Edgar, the physical Kingpin. Acting. Yeah. You decide. <laughs> yeah. In the comments, <laughs> which Vincent D'Onofrio role was most impactful to you? Netflix's Kingpin <laughs> or Edgar? <laughs> or Edgar from Men in Black? I, I'm expecting a war right, right now. There's, there's like, going to be literally like, Edgar, Edgar, Kingpin. I mean, there'll be like one person be like, The Cell. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. No! <laughs> that was a crazy movie. Yeah, it was. Man. It oh, really was. Gosh. It was pretty, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, brilliant. The horse? The horse? Yeah, the scene with, like, the the curtains. Oh! And the, oops. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So, <clears throat> Middle West. Yes. Uh, it's Scotty Young is mm -hmm. the writer. Yep. And then, is it Jorge? Uh, yeah, Jorge Corona. Okay. Um, this is an interesting one. Okay, so it's a, it's a new number one. Yes. We don't... It's from Image. Yes. So, automatically worth, worth checking out. Absolutely. We don't fully know what's happening. Right. Uh, it takes place in the Middle West. <laughs> uh, like, a, like a kid and his father who have a very, to put it mildly, contentious relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one would probably say more like an abusive. Uh, on, it's, on it's, it's on that line. It's on that line. Yeah. Might even hop over yeah. a time or two. Yeah. And and so it's this kid. He's, 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 a, he's a, a, a newspaper boy. Uh, and that kind of sets into motion this interaction with his father that's not particularly the greatest. Mm -hmm. um, but every, it, there's like a talking fox. Like, and that's not going to really spoil anything. Right. And, but it's there. Yeah. And it's... No one else seems to either yeah. recognize it mm -hmm. or be affected by him. Yeah. It's almost like there's this second layer to reality. And the kid is able to see behind it. And he's right. not... It's weird because he's not shocked by it. So, like, it must just be part of his entire... This is him all the time, background. every day. And it's his interactions with that and, the, like, the weird evil entities and, yes. and, like, mixing in that with, like, life choices. It's kind of like a, a modern Midwestern take on the never-ending story. Yeah. Like, that's immediately where I came in on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, it's, it's, it's a really, really cool book because it's, like... Both very very dark and very very light at the same time, right. which is a real cool mix that we don't really get to see too much of. True, I'm I'm calling it a never ending story meets Stranger Things, which, to a degree, kind of they they seem very similar. Yeah, but they are vastly different yeah. things. Yeah. So I, I don't know where this is gonna go. It's a mix of some yeah. supernatural fantasy. Yeah. Ness. But so but set in the Midwest. In, in Middle West. Middle West. <laughs> Dude, I'm not, I, I'm gonna tweet you, and I I need to understand like Middle West. Where in the country? Where in the United States is that like the the phrase? Right. Like I know I know Scotty lives in in Illinois. Yeah. So is that an Illinois thing? Like do y'all say Middle West? Like oh I'm I'm from the Middle West. Like I just need to know. Yeah. Because it's I mean if it's if it's a made up word. Good it's, on you. Because it really, it, it's like that disjointed kind of reality that is the, that is the story. The, yeah. Mm, so I wonder, that's if a good call. I wonder if it's that's that. That's a good call. Okay. I mean, technically all words are made up. True. According to oh. Thor. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that up. That's Thor Infinity War. Yeah, just. 
It's quotable though. It's a good one. It's, it's, it's a good one. one. It's a good one. Um, definitely pick this book up. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely dug it. Um, art is great. Oh my gosh. Storytelling yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, I could see this being a show. I would watch this. Yeah. I would no, really. It really this. has that that marketability, that yeah. that, that yeah. watchability to it. <clears throat> So this is the feel-good book of the week, uh, <laughs> Web of Venom, Carnage Born, Yeah, uh, Donny Cates. Uh, what the heck does it... Uh, when they gave him the reins to the Venom yeah. verse, yeah. did they fully know... What he was going to do? Yeah. No. Because... I don't know that he knew what he was going to do. Right? Because uh, Carnage, to me, <clears throat> already is a very scary character. Indeed. And he's Indeed. like... Uh, but you know, even scary things have a dark side, and you like that's a terrible <laughs> statement. But that is so like, like that sums it up right there. Yeah, because he digs down and like, oh, where where to begin? Not spoiling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, okay, so first of all, mm-hmm. do you guys know who Carnage is? You know, we just we just had Venom as yeah. a movie come out. Yeah, and you you have to know Venom before you can get to Carnage. Right. Uh, ironically. With the Venom movie, mm-hmm. you don't have to know Spider-Man yeah. to get to Venom. Which is interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. But obviously in the comic books you do. Yeah. Um, there, like, Carnage was basically Eddie Brock's roomie yeah. in jail. Mm-hmm. And when the Venom symbiote came and broke Eddie out, a little teeny tiny piece, because yeah. all it takes is a little bit, yeah. gets on Cletus Cassidy, yeah. who is this murderous, psychopathic, born in... Uh, asylum. Yeah. It just... It's bad. Whole, it's all yeah, kind just of the back of cats. Just <laughs> like that's him. Gets the symbiote on him and becomes a worse thing than Venom. Yeah. Now, like a serial killer, like you're a human that's a serial killer right. with a symbiote murderous, now. cannibalistic symbiote. That's like, oh, this is bad. It can't get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just wait. Right. Yeah. Um, now, what's funny is mm-hmm. I've always liked Carnage more than Venom. Like, I've never yeah. actually liked Venom. Yeah, Carnage. I mean, like, yeah. Venom just kind of feels like a bad guy, whereas Carnage, there's just something inherently messed up with this character. Like, there's there's this level of malevolence that he can never be yeah. a good guy. Yeah. Even like, no. Venom keeps bouncing back and forth. Right. You, you, like, there is no Thunderbolts team where you put Carnage on. Yeah. He's like, Carnage, save the cat. Where'd the cat go? And he's like, um, I ate it. You're right. I meant to save it for later, and I didn't. You're like, that's, that's terrible. That's, oh, oh, dang it, Cletus. Cletus. Why? Why, Cletus? <laughs> um, <laughs> should be a hashtag. Like Why, Cletus? Why? Why'd you do it? Um, okay, so mm-hmm. in this in this you know quick re- uh, update of history, yes. Carnage has been killed mm-hmm. a few times. Yes. One time ripped in half by the Sentry. Mm-hmm. Um, another time, as detailed here left in space yeah to kind of float and freeze up and dry out and yeah which they kind of the 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 way they kind of describe it is you can't have one with others so as long as there's one you have the other that's right and it creates the cyclic nature of this is why he keeps popping back up and you can't get rid of both of them yeah you know your efforts to do that yeah ultimately fail Mm -hmm. um What we have in this mm-hmm. is a planned re-resurrection? It, it, yeah, like Re-re- a shady cult or cabal of, of people that think that Null and, and Cletus are meant to be conjoined. Wait. Or or that Null, which is the, the symbiote god. Yeah, Re- go, go pick up Donny Cates, yeah, Run yeah. of Venom. It's, it's amazing. Learn yourself. Yeah. Is a way to, or, or by feeding this remains of Null to Cletus's yeah. remains can bring about a resurgence of Null. Yeah. They just didn't realize how many cats were in, in that the, bag yeah. of crazy. <laughs> Six cats in a three-cat bag. Because <laughs> they're like, Null, Null, Null. And it's like, uh, Null's name is not in the title <laughs> of this here book. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is how this is going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a first appearance of a, of a new particular character. and uh, It's it's dark. Yeah. It's dark. Um, I have to admit, though, the notion of the scale of where this story could go. Yeah, because it isn't just like, oh, here's, here's you know, Carnage is still in place. We're in trademark. There's a, there's a plan there's to a, go from here. That, and whoa. I, there is the, like the, the 16-year-old in me that just wants to see 
all the fights. Like, I don't care about the story. Let's fight, just fight, 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 fight. Let's fight. just do it. Yeah, let's just do it. You know what? Um, if Marvel were to bring back the Max line, this would be a worthy... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Marvel Max, for those that don't know, was a, a mature reader yep. imprint. Um, so you take Carnage. Mm -hmm. Mature readership. No rules. And just go. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> that would just be I'm so sorry. just a bloodshed. It, it just would be disgusting. Oh my gosh. You would literally have books dripping with red ink. Yeah. Like they, they would just they would arrive at stores still moist. Still wet. Just oh mm. it's so good. You're peeling it off. You gotta have like a, a hazmat suit, oh. some latex gloves, and a forensic blood splatter. Yeah. The person yeah. be like Instead of a bookmark, you use this? a scab. You just toss it in there. Just, oh, oh, that'd be that's, amazing. That's Carnage amazing. was meant for that. Like, he, he he really was. Again, Marvel, we have ideas. Yeah. Just call. Yeah. At Irish Ride 39 at Vantage In-House. We got stuff for you, mm -hmm. baby. I'm yeah. just saying. Gosh, that would be nuts. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I would like yeah. that. I would like that a lot. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, dude, I, I have to admit, I was... I was nervous about it, mm -hmm. but upon reading it, yeah, because I went there. Like, is is it going to be funny, Kate? Right. Like, what, like, what kind of Kate's are we going to be getting? And the 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 coherentness of the incoherence mm -hmm. of these people's thought process was just amazing. And then the leading up to what I just cannot like. You'll, yeah. When, when yeah, you pick it up know. and read it, that you'll last know. two pages. Oh. I was like, oh wait, oh 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 oh, oh okay. It, well then. Uh, What's the next book at? Let's, yeah. Is it... Got any more of that? <laughs> that Donny Cates. Hey! He got more of that Carnage, baby! Yeah. Um, now, I have to give a shout out to my daughter, as mm -hmm. well as Rye, for some of the craziness <laughs> that has arisen off camera. Um, again, Marvel, come holla at us, okay? We got ideas. My daughter! Yeah, my nine year old daughter. One. Oh my God. She's the one that so, started it. It was a brilliant, so brilliant idea. Terrible. She said, Carnage Kardashian. Which is brilliant. Which is kind of amazing. Yeah. Okay? Like, if we're talking Marvel swimsuit, you know, photo ops here. I can see it in my head. Come on! The break the internet picture, yeah. but instead of milk, it's a symbiote? <laughs> Come on! Yeah. That is amazing. Oh. But then this one says... Nikki Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> takes it even further... <clears throat> And just to be a little antagonistic, Scott said, <laughs> Carnage B, <laughs> otherwise Carn <laughs> Cardi B, which I'm like, oh my God, they would instantly fight. Nikki Carnage and Carnage B would be enemies. Which would be amazing. I want to see this. Oh. So if you have any Photoshop skills whatsoever, in the comments below, I, listen, best one, I'm buying you a copy of this book. That's it that's, right there. That's your challenge. That's a three ninety nine value. Let's go. Okay. I want your Photoshop in this to have at it. I need either <laughs> Carnage Kardashian, Nikki Carnage, or Carnage B to happen. You put that in our comments. Prepare for a book. Yeah. It's coming. All right. So. Oh god, that's amazing. <laughs> that is so it's, amazing. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Symbiote ain't never looked so good. Yeah. I think. Oh my goodness. Kanye West is gonna beat me up for that. It'd be worth it. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kanye. Yeah. And on that note, it's time for some honorable, honorable mentions. mentions. Um. Okay. So you already said we have nothing. Nothing. Not a single book the same. So. Where do you want to start? Uh, I want to save the one that you've got for last. Uh, let's see. Let's you see. would do that to me. Actually, I was curious. I didn't get a chance to read it yet, but the Marvel Knights number two. So, more Donnie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we were left with a very like huge gaping hole of confusion yeah. off of issue one. Mm -hmm. It is not well filled here, Okay. but the storytelling is so good that you you ride with it. Yeah. So, we're still in this, in this place where all of these characters that were featured in a Marvel Knights series have suddenly awoken with a, a glimpse of a memory about who they were in some yeah. capacity. Um, more characters are appearing, but not everybody is is fully aware yeah. of who they are. Um, Frank Castle's a cop. What? Yeah. His family's alive. 
weight That's um, not the Marvel Universe I know at all. Um, Banner is is in the cutest way possible. He's like, I pass out and I wake up and either a child or a couple different kids have written notes to tell me what's going on. And of course, when he says it, I'm like, it's not a kid that wrote that note. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, oh, Hulk, <laughs> right? Mm, crayon, like. <laughs> and if he listen, if Hulk breaks a crayon, I don't even want to know. Crayola, you don't make crayons good enough to stem that time. Yeah. But no, this. What's interesting is like it's still it's still a, an ongoing mystery. Like yeah. we still don't know, you know, what's caused this. How yep. it's it's happened, uh, why it's happened, but there is a character that is intrinsic to Matt Murdock's history yeah. that appears. He can see. He's not sure if anyone else can, mm-hmm. and it makes a whole another layer of this huh. mystery cake. Actually, I'm gonna show you. Let's see. That person right there. Yes. Is that person really? Yes. Well, that's. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, that's there you go. Actually, kind of mind blowing. <clears throat> um, for you, sir. The last was the last uh, space race. Thank you. Thank you. Can can I can I get a little bit? On yeah. This one. This is number two. Number yeah? two. Yeah. Okay. Aftershock. Peter Calloway. Alex Chabot. Uh, it's the science fiction uh, story where they there is some kind of non-Earth-based craft that is cutting through the solar system, Mm -hmm. and various governments are trying to figure out a way to get up there and interact with it to be the first ones. And this one began, uh, we were introduced to a cast of characters in the first one. Uh, Issue two uh, begins to let us know more about that group of characters and additional characters that are going to be part of this mission from the U.S.'s point of view uh, to go and and interact with this this group of of extraterrestrial beings. it is. Oh, that's it, a great. Thing. Yeah, so it's like some really, really cool artwork. Um, a very, very smart t- s- tactical play by this particular character, Freeman. Okay. Um, I really, really dig it. It's, it's, it's got. The, I like the art a lot. Yeah, the art. The art's amazing. It's like got the vibe of Contact, but in a more character driven way Ooh. Like, like it's it's a it's really a solid read uh, you you feel for these characters okay and it, it is it is a non dystopian sci-fi which which nowadays is is not That's easy a rarity, to find man so it's very very <laughs> hopeful like there there are people doing bad things in it but at the same time there is just this this honest hope and excitement that these characters have to go interact with these people that are not from our solar system for, oh. that, for that first contact. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some kind of darkness behind that. Of because whenever you have the, like the, you know, the U.S. military is part of it. I mean, it's always, it's, you know, bubble yeah. gums and rainbows. It, yeah. But, yeah, definitely really, really cool. I, I enjoy it. It's only up to issue two. Hit up your local shop. They have jump on point. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Um, I'm still on the Tom King train. Batman, number 59. Uh, last issue, the Penguin's lady gets murdered. In order to save himself, he is answering to Senior Bane, who is like, take out Pennyworth. This is the last issue. But instead, he double-crosses Bane and tells Batman what the situation is. In this, Batman goes to see if what Penguin says is true. There are things that happen after. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of... You want to know how, how raw it gets? Because right now, Batman is still in kind of an emotional state. You see who that is. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say raw emotional state, you're, yeah. not, you're not wrong. It, yeah. You're not wrong at all. Um, there is a very real chance that that changes... Everything. Yeah, that's that's a completely different dynamic post what happens on that page. Yeah. Um, Tom King has decided that he's going to take the Batman mythos and shake it. Yeah. And just throw it out there and see what happens. So, um, very brutal, very interesting. Yeah. Um, there, I, I have to, okay, slight spoiler. Mm-hmm. Batman makes a threat to some very, like, armed guards mm-hmm. that is probably one of the best batman threats i've seen in a long time i kudos that was it was good it was yeah. tasty I, I 
I, I read it. I saw the reaction. I was like, that's Batman. Yeah, that's, Batman. that's it. Yeah, that's it. You just can't. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <clears throat> I'm going to save this. Yeah, yeah, you got to save it. American Carnage. Okay. DC More Vertigo. Carnage. Yeah. But not, <laughs> but not, not, not no red. No symbiotes? Okay. No, no, this is uh, another kind of like really, really kind of dark, deep book. Um, so it's got kind of, uh, I'm trying to figure out, the wire maybe scalped early on. Uh, it's the story of this former FBI agent uh, who is a person of color, but he, he passes as white. Uh, there have, That's a story be all into itself. Right? So, I mean, like, I'm really curious about this dude's backstory. Right. Um, there is a, uh, a racist organization that has killed one of his former colleagues, and he is being brought back in undercover to in infiltrate what they think the group is that was behind it. So it is very tense. It is, like, because he's, he's worried for his life, but at the same time, he's wanting to wanting to find out he's, well he's basically torn because he wants to either be left alone because this is such a dangerous as soon as your cover's blown you're done you're done yeah and figure out who killed his friend so it's uh, it's yeah it's a tough reading that last page where Ooh. yeah because you go from thinking how he's going to infiltrate and you know how he's being brought along to that that last punch in the face where you're like oh Oh God! Art wise, it reminds me of uh, Eduardo Rizzo right, right. from 100 Bullets. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely liking that. Yeah, that's very very you, cool. Yeah, I mean, when yeah. you're talking gritty, mm -hmm. real life, yeah, like drama stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. Man. Yeah, you can't go wrong. With yeah, that. that's. Yeah. Uh, but there's very 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 harsh language. Uh, very much uh, mature readers. Okay, so, like don't go in thinking like ah, oh, you know. Oh like, yay! I mean, American Carnage. You can't. It, it can't. You, you've not really got to know. Like, yeah. Like, Clearly yeah. not, not yeah. at all. Uh, unlike <laughs> <clears throat> Jeremy Taylor, Tyler, sorry. Um, I hate your guts. I hate your guts. Um, my buddy Jeremy made me read this. Mm -hmm. It was a specific request just so I'd have to talk about My Little Pony on the show. <laughs> Our producer Jeremy apparently likes this too. Were you guys colluding? What are you? Y'all go to Jeremy clubs? Is that what it is? Y'all just y'all talk about this? It's Tyler, it's Tyler. But what's funny is no. What's weird though is he is also a very tall, bearded white guy who likes to shave his head. So I'm thinking you guys know each other. Mm, mm, okay, okay, got you. Um, okay, so My Little Pony, Nightmare Nights. Number two, by the way. Um, what's crazy is, okay, so I know two of the creative team. Like, really? Yes. Yeah, so Tony Fleeks and Heather Breckel, I know them. Uh, Tony I've worked with during my stint as Artist Alley Coordinator at Wizard World. And Heather uh, actually did some color work for Freestyle Comics way back really? in the day. So, yes, which yeah. is crazy. Um, this book is essentially My Little Pony's version of Ocean's Eleven. It's either mind-blowingly good. I didn't say which Ocean's Eleven. It could have been the original. <laughs> might, might not. If you don't know what that means, like if you're like, oh, you mean the George Clooney? No, that's not the original. That's not the original. That's not the original. So you have to do some research. Um, this book is is long. Okay, like it's 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 a thick. Like feel feel that. That's a little girthy. Okay. Yeah. Is that 28 pages? I don't think so. I think it's a little bit more than 28 pages. It might be a solid 32. I don't know. But uh, there's some stuff that happens. Um, yeah, that, okay, so. Uh, princess Luna, who is a princess from uh, Equestria, has lost some of her power. Uh, it was stolen in the previous issue. And she's on this mission to try to get it back. And so she's bringing together this ragtag team of pseudo-villains to help steal it back from who is essentially the goddess of luck. They go to Las Pegasus, uh, which is the pony version of Las Vegas. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they break into Tony Benedict's places and... Uh, 
the MGM, the Bellagio. They have a plan, people. They have a plan. It's My Little Ponies meets Ocean's Eleven. It is the craziest. <laughs> like I'm reading, and I'm like, like they are seriously, like going at this like a like a little caper story. Yeah, let's. I want my daughter to read it, but at the same time, no, I don't. Because I'm like, I don't want you to have this level of planning yeah. in your life. That's, no. That's too much. It's it's way too much. Like, it's this is the reason why a child will wear an outfit underneath their clothes going to school, yeah. and then all of a sudden, look, I'm a pony. And I'm like, what? what, uh, no, what? No, no, That's you're... not what you were wearing. Was I? I learned it by watching My Little my Pony. Little pony. <laughs> it's all there. I read it. I hate you. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Jeremy. I, oh, I owe you. Just for that, I'm right slower. Just for you. Okay, and on that bit of goodness, sir, we now, are going back to the 80s some more. Now that you're all warmed up from that pile of shame. All right. So I was I was the kid. I was that, that kid in the corner of the of the neighborhood that yes. had the GoBots. Now I know GoBots came first, but True. Transformers were the superior. It, it, like you you can judge me, Jeremy. They're not judging. I'm a GoBots fan. Really? Yeah. Over Transformers? Absolutely. Whoa! Whoa. I don't even know y'all right now. What is happening? I've been on this show for like five years. I I I can't. I was a GoBots. Wow. wow. Okay. Interesting. We'll discuss later. Yeah, right. yeah. So GoBots number one. Yes. IDW, which they've got the rights for Transformers. I'm curious to see if those will cross over Ooh, at some point. The battle we've all been waiting for. Yeah. All right, so Tom Scioli. Yes. Uh, who, That's my guy. I, I love his stuff. Yeah, I loved his his Godland stuff. Yes. Which is like super Jack Kirby. Mm -hmm. um, like his stuff with G.I. Joe versus Transformers, which was like a weird, like I, I conceptually right. I get where it was coming from. Um all right, so that, that, that's some of his previous work you might be familiar with. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward GoBot story. Um, it's one of those, there are a group of GoBots who have gone rogue and have gone bad. And, and they become Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 well, that's the, the thing I'm trying to figure out. Because, all right, with the difference between GoBots and Transformers, GoBots, all right, Transformers were their own sentient beings with right. their own culture and their own right. planet. Right, whole alien race. And, 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 and they're, they're the, the different things that go bad between people. Gobots were kind of different in that they were robots that functioned under the Asimov laws. Oh, the three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it, it, it has like a different sort of vibe to them. Like humans would ride around in them and like almost in like a Robotech kind of sense. Okay. Um, and the, the Gobots weren't completely subservient to humans, but there there was a little bit of deference to, to the human wishes. All right. So in this, there's like a like an underground GoBots fight club, and GoBots are everywhere. Like it isn't in Transformers where well, like, they're hidden. They're hidden. Right. Like everybody got a GoBot. <laughs> and so like there's this underground GoBot fight club where, where GoBots get that killed. That is awesome. Yeah. And then at the end, the Asimov laws are removed. Oh. And like GoBots that are that have been sick of some dude like riding around in them, telling them to look like, yeah, I mean, yeah. So like bad things are happening. GoBot riots. I, I don't know what the heck that. That thing looks is. gnarly yeah, though. That, is, that does not look GoBot. I would have played with that. It, yeah. So, yeah, it kind of kind of interesting. It's it's a definitely. I don't know. The the vibe is is definitely experimental. Okay. Um, so here's here's my critique here. Mm -hmm. They clearly colored it with the intent of it looking like an old book. Yeah. They should have went full newsprint. Yeah. Just go for it, man. Yeah. Because it's glossy paper. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. No, but I they've no, got I the it. aging it. on it. Yeah. You should just go full newsprint. Yeah. Do that. Because yeah. that would make this even better. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting. I'm curious to see where issue two goes. Um, it, if you're picking it up thinking it's a knockoff Transformers, it's not. It's a whole different sort of vibe what i love is okay so to geek out from the art standpoint mm -hmm. this is clearly not inked yeah it's it's straight like digital colors over tom's pencils yeah and that brings something totally cool yeah. to this like this is if you're if you're really into like super pristine um you know illustration maybe you'll like this maybe you won't yeah it's it's a mixed bag, but yeah. if you're into like you said that classic old school stuff, yeah. dude, this is this yeah. is beautiful. 
Yeah, this one's pretty pretty interesting. And it, plus, the main bad guy's name is Psy Kill, and he's a motorcycle. I mean, that's dope. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, and there's that's like that's a dope layout. Yeah, like it's really it it makes your eye follow the line of combat. Yeah. Like it's really it's really interesting the way it's all and it's him. Like I think he did the writing and the art. Yep. So it's like this is beyond, actually Tom right here. Yeah. So it's uh, like beyond a symbiotic relationship. It's the one person handling everything. That's awesome. So wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I was I was definitely giving you poop for it, but that's still kind of cool. Yeah, I have to admit, like that's a cool looking cover too. Like, yeah, it's it's, it's one. You know, I don't know if anybody else handled it. Would we have the same sort of? That's true. What's his What's his name? Something one. What is it? Oh, uh, there's leader one. Leader one, which yes. is weird because he kind of like listens to a human tell him. It's it. it yeah, there's like it's that whole other dynamic that can be mined. Yeah. Which one were you? Were you a GoBots? Were you a Transformers? Yeah. Or third option, the Mighty Orbots. Where did you lie? What was your anime robot? One, what? I don't know that one. The Mighty Orbots? I don't know about the Mighty or No. <sighs> I'll be jumping onto YouTube. Yep. <laughs> go ahead and go to YouTube right yeah. now. Yeah, it's real, baby. That's right. It's real. It's a knockoff Voltron. Uh, excuse me. Voltron didn't have its own rap album. The Mighty Orbots did. <laughs> so, watch yourself, okay? <laughs> watch yourself. Look up Crunch, okay? That was my guy. He was dope. Recognize. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you guys for all the subscriptions yep. that we just got. Quite, like, quite that's a few. Very awesome. Thank you. Much love. Yes, we thoroughly appreciate yep. it. Uh, tell your friends, subscribe, because we are yep. on the road yeah. to 1,000. 1,000. Like, we are so close. Yep. Within 100, not even a joke, yep. which is great. Um, and again, when you tell your friends to, to check us out, the subscription button yep. and then the bell notification. It's the thing. Once so, a week will pop up and you'll be like, oh, there's those guys again. They're back. Oh, yeah. gosh. Um, actually, my mom just subscribed. Oh, really? Which is amazing because she's like, I love watching you guys. She gets just as infuriated about not knowing our spoiler as we do about not being able to give it. That's so, so cool. It That's works. So cool. It, it's there. Yeah. We're together in this. So, yes, thank you guys so, so very much. Again, keep spreading the word yep. because black, white, and red all over is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Until they evict us from the shop. Or that. We'll just shoot it from your backyard. Oh, my gosh. It'd be amazing. No, no, no. Not your backyard. Their Bears. backyard. <laughs> you better trim them hedges. <laughs>